If you're on the lookout for a great new show to help teach you about business, check out The Hustle Daily Show, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business builders. The Hustle Daily Show is your daily dose of business, tech, news, and original stories to keep you in the loop on what's trending in business. Just like here, it's a daily podcast on which their team of writers break down the biggest business headlines in 10 minutes or less and explain why you should care about them. They'll also do deep dives on topics like a man who won the lottery 14 times and why it's nearly impossible to buy an original Bob Ross painting. I checked out a few episodes of The Hustle Daily Show and to me, it was quick, educational, and feels like the perfect show to pair with OWD. So search for The Hustle Daily Show in your favorite podcast app, like the one you're using right now. You'll be glad you did. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. This is Optimal Work Daily, episode 1218, When to Quit Your Job to Start Your Business, by Stephen Worley of lifeskillsthatmatter.com. And I am Dan, I am your host and narrator with you every single day to help you optimize your work life. And so without further ado, I think we should get right to our article for today as we optimize your life. When to Quit Your Job to Start Your Business, by Stephen Worley, of lifeskillsthatmatter.com. How do you know when to quit your job to start your business and work on it full-time? When it feels right to you. Now, conventional wisdom will tell you to quit your job to start your business when you have at least three to six months worth of savings or more, your side business has more business than you can handle working a full-time job, your business is earning enough money to cover your basic monthly expenses. I don't wanna downplay the financial considerations. From my experience working with hundreds of aspiring solopreneurs over the past decade, the majority of people don't leave their job once their financial targets have been met. They leave when they feel the time is right for them, independent of their financial situation. I've worked with people who have more than a year's worth of savings. However, they still didn't feel like the time was right to leave their job. When does it feel right to quit your job to start your business? Only you will know when it feels right. I know, that's probably an annoying answer. You'll know when you have a strong sense of clarity and confidence to finally commit 100% to your business. You'll feel it in your gut. Most people are more comfortable starting their business on the side until it generates enough revenue to justify leaving their job. For others, they need to go all in on their business from the start. They need to eliminate the distraction of full-time employment as soon as possible. Everyone's circumstances are different. Again, only you will know when it feels right for you to quit your job to start your business. Here are some common feelings people experience when they know the time is right for them. Number one, can no longer endure a toxic work environment. Any abuse or hostility you're experiencing in your current job from your boss, colleagues, or clients may be part of the motivation to become your own boss. Definitely exit your toxic work environment as soon as you're able. Don't start your business by looking at it as an escape from your bad work situation. You don't want to start your business off on the wrong foot. If your work life is extremely unhealthy, consider getting another job first. Before you commit to working full-time on your business, give yourself the opportunity to heal emotionally. Fear of starting your business gets weaker and weaker. Believe it or not, the fear that has been preventing you from starting your business might finally be overcome by the stronger emotion of feeling drained, undervalued, or unheard by your employment situation. Somehow going out on your own will suddenly seem less risky than clinging on to a steady paycheck that is sucking the life out of you. Number three, financial confidence. You might have a savings goal to expand your emergency fund well beyond three months, or set a sales goal you want your business to hit before you even consider leaving your job. However, your financial goals may not align with your feeling of financial confidence. For example, you may not be close to realizing your financial goals, but you might have built up your financial confidence to leave sooner because you have gained experience running your business and have cut your personal expenses. You realize that by leaving your job, you will have an enormous boost of extra attention, energy, and time to focus on growing your business faster. On the other hand, you might hit your financial goals or even exceed them. 
even when you achieve these goals, you realize you still don't have the financial confidence to go all in on your business. Somehow your business might still feel untested or there's still a nagging doubt you need to resolve. Number four, stretched too thin. There might come a time when you're working so much on your side business, it almost becomes a full-time job while you still have a full-time job. If you feel like you're on the verge of burnout, it's time to reflect on what it will take to let go of your job. Number five, hiding your true self. You feel like it takes more and more energy to put up your facade at work. You grow more tired of being someone you know you no longer want to be. It gets harder and harder to not speak your truth, especially when you know it won't be appreciated by your colleagues. That's the moment you know you've started identifying more with your business than your job. Number six, desire to get laid off. You wish your manager would just lay you off. Somehow you know it's time to leave your job, but it would be so much easier if someone else made that decision for you. You fantasize about it with greater frequency. When you hear rumors about layoffs in your company, you consider volunteering. The idea of collecting unemployment as you continue to build your business sounds more ideal than staying employed. Number seven, no longer in the loop of office gossip. The moment you opt out of the office rumor mill is your first step out the door. You decline invites from your coworkers for lunch or happy hour. You're leaving your work tribe to build your new tribe around your business. Number eight, caring less about what your colleagues think. You barely tried to hide the fact that you're working on your business during office hours. Colleagues think they're looking out for you by telling you about new opportunities for you within the organization, but your response is unenthusiastic. They may even let you know that people are talking behind your back about your changed attitude and your appearance of slacking off. You listen, but no longer care. Number nine, strong emotional reactions. You get easily triggered in ways you didn't expect by an off-the-cuff remark from a colleague, by a task your boss asks you to perform, or by one of your pet peeves. You're caught off guard by your strong reaction, yet not all that surprised. Your sensitivity makes you aware you can no longer take working there. Number 10, growing tension in your heart. The tension between the work you feel like you have to do versus the work you want to do grows to the point you can feel physical tension in your chest. You feel anxious, easily distracted, or exhausted. Your desire for your work freedom can no longer be repressed. As excited as you may be about quitting your job to start your business, deep down inside, you may always need to give yourself time to grieve the loss of your job. When you make the significant decision to finally work for yourself, you're stepping into a new identity and you're leaving the old one behind. Give yourself a moment to reflect and let go. What are you feeling? If you're experiencing three or more of these feelings, it might be time to do some self-reflection on your exit strategy from your job. If you need to stick it out a little longer for financial reasons, think of your job as one of your investors. It's providing you with a source of funding so you can continue to build your business on your terms. When the funding from your job is getting in the way of generating more revenue from your business, then it's time to quit your job to start your business. You just listened to the post titled When to Quit Your Job to Start Your Business by Stephen Worley of LifeSkillsThatMatter.com. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree. Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com startup. So just go to indeed.com startup right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, 
TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. And thanks so much to Stephen for giving us permission to narrate from his blog. You can come visit his site, which I have linked in this episode's description and at oldpodcast.com. And he started Life Skills That Matter back in 2016. The idea was to show you how work is changing as you know it and how you can change work to your advantage. He's been working for himself since getting laid off on election day back in 2000. He's obsessed with researching and experimenting with alternative ways of working, and he now makes enough money to live the life that he wants to live without losing his mind from overworking. And he also has a podcast of his own where he has interviewed over 500 people who have made this transformation to self-employment. It's called Life Skills That Matter Podcast, and you can also find that on his site, lifeskillsthatmatter.com. But that's it for another edition of Optimal Work Daily. Hope you enjoyed the post and that you're enjoying your week. And I'll see you right back here, same place, same time tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.